I am a certified light build astrologer. I am an emotion code practitioner, and I am the creator of the Zodiac Business Mindset. And I have created the Celestial Mindset Business Academy to go along with that Zodiac Business Mindset. I have with me today, Jennifer Sterling Campbell, and she has been a part of my Celestial Mindset Business Academy, and she is launching her Overcoming or Overcome Depression podcast this week. It's this week, right? It is. On, on Friday? November 16th. On the 16th. And what a wonderful time to launch a podcast. We have a full moon on the 15th. And so full moons are from letting go of things that you're complete. You've completed them and you're launching them. And you are currently launching your Overcome Depression podcast on a full moon in alignment with everything that is flowing in your zodiac chart. And so I want you to, well, just to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself. If you want to share a little bit about um, yourself, go ahead and Here's Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm Jennifer Sterling Campbell, as Aubrey said. I struggled with depression for about 25 years, from the time I was a little kid to about 25, and then started finding solutions that were actually changing the way that I thought and the way that I acted. And I've spent the last 15 years since finding that healing, compiling things and um just basically using any tools that I could find and experimenting on myself. And I've created a program essentially. And I, at first I thought maybe I should charge for this program, like a lot of people do out there and that, which is fine, but I felt like God was telling me to make it into a podcast. So it's essentially this program that I'm putting into podcast form and we'll be selling a workbook to go with it for anyone who wants to have all of the information kind of compiled into one nice, pretty place. So that's what I'm doing right now. And Aubrey's program was literally at the perfect time. And I was thinking of launching in January or sometime next year. And it kind of propelled me forward so that I felt prepared and excited about releasing it before Christmas. So I'm actually really excited. And before the Academy, I was kind of terrified <laughs> of launching this podcast and I had a lot of insecurities a lot of self-doubt. And Aubrey actually reached out to me and said, I think you're supposed to do this because I heard her, her talk about it, but I thought, no, no, I can't afford it right now. And and um, I ended up investing and, and doing it anyway. And I'm so glad that I did. Thank you for sharing all of that. And so, yes, um, share with us a little bit more about what challenges you were facing before we began working together and what you did to try and solve those challenges, especially as it came to pertain, as it was pertaining to your podcast, what challenges were you experiencing? I was having a few creative blocks, just wasn't quite sure how to implement everything. And I've been mulling it around in my head for like 10 years, <laughs> trying to figure out how would I implement something like this. And at that same time I took your program, I also did the artist way, which I think to work doing those two together was profoundly powerful, um, working on the, the creative side and unblocking myself in those ways. And then doing the SRT and the sessions with you that helped me think in business ways. And so I was very, very, very afraid of several things. One of which was, am I going to be able, am I going to be so freaking busy? Am I going to be exhausted all the time? Cause that was kind of the me from my past when I was a work, super workaholic, Am I going to be able to prioritize my family? Um, like, can I find that balance? And then what if I find success? Will I be able to handle it? What if I fail miserably? Can I handle it? You know, can I handle bad comments, good comments? Because inevitably when you put yourself out there like I'm going to be doing, you're going to get some of both. And um, it's it can be hard because I've, I've watched other people experience this and how I mean, you, you kind of have to take it as a grain of salt, not get too puffed up and not get too <laughs> beat up when people say anything and to just kind of let it be what it is and not take anything too seriously, but take what you can and improve based on the comments that are being, that basically the feedback and look at it as feedback, not uh, identifiers of your worth, which has always maybe been a little bit hard for me. But I feel like as I worked through your class, I found that a lot of those fears have just fallen off. I'm no longer afraid anymore. I'm not feeling that insecurity. I'm not scared of launching this podcast. I'm now excited, like legitimately 
authentically excited and I don't even care how it does. <laughs> I'm just excited for the opportunity to put it out there and just see what it does. Like I'm curious, but before I was, I was putting a lot of pressure on myself. Like if I put all this effort into it and it doesn't do well, then what a waste of time or, you know, th those kind of thoughts where I'm just excited now to put my creative baby out and work on this thing that is more of a passion project for me now. And I'm enjoying doing it and I'm enjoying the process. And for me, it's art. So. And I'm so, yeah, what I'm hearing is that you had a lot of concerns about your podcast launching it and, and it not being received as you would have liked it to. And then joining with in the academy, you found the grace within your heart to let go of those fears. Um, and you were able to take action to get this podcast ready. And so I've been a part of this journey. I've had many conversations with you as we were preparing this. And I remember even before you joined the Academy, you'd been talking about your podcast basically since I first met you a few years ago. As we went through these 12 weeks in this Academy, I'm curious about your process during these 12 weeks. Like what was your journey as we began working together? Well, first I noticed that the things that I was trying to push myself or force myself to do, was it, I, it was no longer a problem. I wanted to do those things. It wasn't me having to push through willpower anymore. And so it became more fun. And the, the subtle changes that took place over the 12 weeks, and I, I think anybody doing any kind of work through Mastermind or the Academy, you have to keep in mind that it, you might not have noticed these huge, absolutely like today, tomorrow, like I, I felt this way yesterday and I'm feeling this way today. It's more of this gradual process where one one day along the line, you go, wow, I'm, I'm doing things or I'm thinking things in ways that I've never thought or done before. Huh. And it's just this, wow, that's interesting. I and, and it and it just happens naturally. It doesn't feel like a boot camp or something really super hard that you're working through. It just naturally occurs when you start removing those um, belief systems. So that's the beautiful thing about something like this is that it isn't hard. You just have to show up. Okay. And so showing up each week for the 12 weeks, we did a different, different area uh, focus. And so for those who are watching this that aren't fully versed in what my Zodiac business mindset is and how it's pertaining to my Celestial Mindset Business Academy is we have 12 areas of focus that align to the Zodiac. And each of these areas of focus are pertaining to our business and areas within our business, such as the first area of focus is self-identity and your personal brand. The second area of focus is personal values as well as financials. The third is communication and networking. And then the fourth is, you know, home and emotional foundation all the way through the 12 areas. And so what we did every single week was we met um, and we went through the entire class pertaining to that area of focus, which week did you feel? And, you know, honestly, I'm all like, I can't even pick one. I created it. I'm biased, but I'm wondering if there was a week that you sat down and you were like, oh my gosh, this week just was my week for me to be here. Did any of these weeks stick out to you? Any area of focus you want to just point out that was yours? Yes. Um, there were several, of course. The The one that I thought was the coolest was the guides. One where we talked about pick, picking and choosing who we wanted to be able, whose energy we want to be able to essentially tap into or angels, um, if you will. And I'd, I'd always kind of thought of that as, well, I just want to be connected to Christ. So why would I want to connect to guides? Um, and then I realized that I could, because we did a meditation or a visualization where we would invite our guides into a room where there was a table. And I realized, oh my gosh, I can put Christ at the head of my table and still benefit from the wisdom of other people who've lived and who have you know knowledge that I don't necessarily have. And he can mediate the whole conversation. <laughs> so that's what I did. And that was just so cool for me because it's something I'd never, I, I, I always felt a little cautious about doing. And then, and I felt safe when I realized that I could 
imagine that. And it, it was really beautiful experience. The other, there's two others that I really thought were cool. One was, I think just last week where we talked, we went through a series of sentences and we were to record them with our own voice and then listen to them over the course of the week. And there were, there were some on ownership, like basically owning that you've created the life that you, you have right now and how you respond is your responsibility, regardless of how others act and so forth. And I thought that was very powerful. I don't think there's anyone on this planet who can benefit from that one. <laughs> and um, the, the other one was Leo. We were talking about, cause, cause I, even looking at my chart, I kind of, kind of deflated because I realized I don't have a lot of Leo energy. <laughs> And I'm trying to do this podcast where I'm in the spotlight or supposed to be and, um, on a, you know, putting myself in front of a camera and Leo energy is all about that, but it's not necessarily a place I'm super comfortable. Um, I don't love being there. I'm not a, oh, look at me person. So uh, we worked on clearing some beliefs around, uh, for me, what, and I think we did this in office hour, that... I, I'm afraid, I, I'm afraid I had the fear that people don't want to follow me. Yeah. Or that, and, and, um, and I, and there were certainly some things from my past that would have exacerbated that belief or caused me to believe that, yeah, people don't want to listen to me. Nobody wants to follow me. People would rather follow someone else. And, and so working through that belief was, was very helpful as well, or that negative belief and replacing it with that. Yes, people do will want to follow me. And people do like to follow me. I'm a great leader and people are blessed to have me as a leader. Those kind of belief systems are much, feel a lot better <laughs> than the other ones. We did end up letting go a lot of self-sabotaging belief systems that truly keep us stuck. And we did it one area at a time. And so a lot of people um, I recognize get stuck in the bigger picture where they feel like they have to do everything all at once. With this academy, we focus on one area at a time and we let go of the other 11 areas as we step into one belief system and we focus on that and shifting that area and creating the uh, mindset of success within our lives. With the mastermind aspect of this academy, you joined it. There was the 12 weeks of the academy and it had the mastermind slash office hours. What what was your favorite portion? Because you mentioned it in the office hours where we found that belief that was unique to you. Which did you like the most, the academy itself, or did you prefer the mastermind in the office hours, or can you even make a decision? They're all good. Um, I can't say one is necessarily better than the other, but I've always liked one-on-one. -on -one. I've always preferred, <laughs> and even when I'm as I as a teacher, I would rather teach one-on-one -on -one student than a classroom. That's just me. And so I really liked the opportunity to hone in on personalized issues in the office hours. That was a, and, and I can't even express how, what an amazing deal that is considering how much it is just to have a single session with you and to have that opportunity for 12 weeks straight. And even though it's not just you in the office hours, there were days actually where it was just me. <laughs> nobody, nobody came that day and it was just me. And so I got basically this personalized session for an hour and it was incredible. It's incredible, an incredible deal, an incredible experience and the benefits can't be measured. I mean, it's just, it was incredibly helpful in a time when I was, I, I've been feeling quite insecure in working up to this launch. So. Yeah. So as you were working up to this launch, when we began working together, I know you had a lot of concerns. You had set a date. You were hoping to launch this podcast by next year. And I'm curious what shifted or did you notice when the shift occurred when you were like, I'm going to launch it before Thanksgiving? What happened and when within the Academy did that acknowledgement become aware? When did that shift? I think it was sometime in the middle, uh, about around week seven, maybe. Yeah. And I can't remember where I was, but I was think I was asking the Lord the question, when, what's the date? When should I launch this podcast? And I, and just November 16th popped into my head and it kept coming into my head. And I was like, well, all right, 
November 16th it is. And so I just started doing what I had to do to launch it for that date with faith that he knows what he's doing. And I think we looked at my chart and we really couldn't find anything majorly like poignant that should say, oh yeah, this would be a great day for the other than the full moon. That, that's cool, but that happens every month. And so it's just a faith-based intuition. I think it's supposed to be this day. Don't know why, but we're launching it on November 16th. And in fact, it's a Saturday, which is interesting because I'm going to be releasing them from now on on a Friday. So looking at your chart in order to, and I'm assuming we did that either in office hours or during the mastermind, um, we were looking at that chart to see when would be best. We went through each area of focus um, to see what timeline would be best for you. Did you find that following the, the alignment with the full moon, new moon, according to to the Zodiac business mindset, did that help you create your plan in order to launch it? Other than you were given that date, you know, the actions you took between yeah. given that date to now, did you find that everything just aligned within the Zodiac chart to fit that date? Yeah. And I liked it that you challenged us, like you would keep us accountable. Like, what are you going to do this week? And I'm pretty motivated by myself, but having you to do that as well kind of made it so that, no, I really do have to do this because Aubrey's going to ask me next week. <laughs> and so I, I would do the most important things, which I have a tendency to want to do all the things that I'm like, well, these aren't going to get done if I do them, don't do them now because, it, but they're like outliers. They're like things that can wait. And so that was where it kind of honed it me in. And I feel like uh, as far as the Zodiac, I feel like when I look at it in hindsight, I'm like, oh yeah, I was totally leaning into that. And I don't necessarily keep track of it like some people do as quite as closely, but it what it's very validating for me, especially during the times that were harder for me to have more compassion with myself and my spouse and my kids when things were just more challenging and difficult and to give myself grace or a break or maybe more of a rest because I needed it and to not be condemning myself for not pushing forward no matter what, or making a mistake or, or losing my temper. Like there was a week this year that I it recently where I've had more anger show up in my space than I have. And I think for, I can note the last time I felt that anger was like four years ago and I don't really struggle with anger anymore. So it was kind of a, oh, oh my gosh, where'd that come from? It scared me. Um, but I was able to work through it within a few days. Whereas before it was a constant part of my life. So just being at a place where I can both know and have faith, just have that faith that this is going to pass and I have the tools to work through it and having you there to help me through that process as well and just to get back on track. And I feel like when we resist those icky times and we're like push, shoving them aside and saying, no, I can't feel this way, it actually sets us back a lot more. We can't move forward like we could if we just take a break, honor these feelings, figure out what's going on. Okay, cool. And then moving on. I had a question here is, were there any challenges or pleasant surprises within our time working together? And I would easily say that that challenge that came up of this unexpected anger that showed up in your life, was there um, a pleasant surprise also during the 12 weeks that we were working together? Yes, several. I noticed I was less serious um, mm -hmm. and just just feeling more buoyant in, in terms of noticing things. Just looking out the window this morning and seeing my son playing with his truck. Like it just put a smile on my face where I have in my whole life just had a tendency to tunnel vision, get the things done, doing dishes, whatever it is, and just missing life outside of that. All the beauty beautiful things that are happening with my kids or my, like even my goats. I was noticing after a session that I was outside milking my goats or getting ready to. And I saw this, this, th that there was some ants who had made their way up into the trough that's attached to the milking stand. And it's pretty high up there. And they were, and there was this one ant in particular who had this sunflower seed in his hands or her hands, not sure which gender this ant was. <laughs> and, <laughs> she, and this little ant had this big old sunflower seed about three times its size. And it was trying to get over the edge of this bowl and was teetering back and forth and whoa, 
<laughs> and it was just so funny and cute. And I just found myself laughing out loud. Whereas before I would just be like, get out of here. You're in my way. You know, I, I have things to do. And just being able to notice that and to be able to cheer this little Anton as he was trying to make it over the edge and he made it. But the, those little those, it's also the little things that bring joy and to, that make life worth living. If we didn't notice those little things, I mean, that's like children do. Everything is a miracle to them. They've never yeah. met before. They, it's the first time in their physical body and they, and they just notice things and they get excited about things, all the little things that like you'll see kids down looking at ants, you know, like this. And when did we lose that? And yeah. getting some of that back, that childlike awe of the world and noticing things has been just life-changing, honestly. Oh my goodness. Thank you for sharing that. I love the acknowledgement of the joy in life. Just the little things, watching an ant struggle to do its ant thing. We don't normally picture that a moment where we can feel the joy, but that's where you found the joy, the peace, the hope, the, the con 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 contentment in life that is truly my desire for the outcome of this 12 week, this 12 week academy of the celestial mindset business academy. My desire is to get to that state where we're so fully connected to that power greater, greater than us to that, to our source and to Christ. And we feel that love and that peace flowing through us at all times. I remember you expressing, expressing to me that you were feeling more patient with your significant other. You were feeling yes. more patient as a mother, you're feeling more joy during those times together. And um, that is- Humor, like, humor was, was a lot more prevalent in our home too. Yeah. And, and I, I've read that um, couples who joke, you know, like laugh more, you know, they make a mistake and then they're laughing about it rather than getting upset. Like those are the, the couples that are happier in general. And I'm like, oh, I'm bec we're becoming that. This is so exciting. You know, not that we're not happy, but I, I felt like we both have a tendency to take life way too seriously. And when I was finding reasons to laugh, he was laughing too. Like it was, it was just so much more fun and putting, putting it just both of us at ease. And um, so, yeah, I've been just loving being alive <laughs> lately, just in and every, every, every day, it's not scary as it used to be. And scary meaning me working up to this business launch. I was, I was, again, I was scared and yeah. I'm feeling just a lot of peace and joy around it now. Yeah. And it's so much support. I mean, I have a spouse who's extremely supportive. Um, he bought me a new computer that he, we, he, I'm sure he made personal sacrifices for that. We could, we, we didn't have the money for that. He did it anyway, so that I could do this podcast thing. He makes a point of taking one day a week where he takes my toddler and just takes him so I can work. And he, he doesn't get upset when I'm working on something and, I, and I'm saying, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I know, I know you want to go to bed or I'm, so, I know I'm, I'm sorry, I've been so busy and I need more help. And he's like, no, like, this is great. I love what you're doing. And, and that feels so good, especially I have a lot of Capricorn <laughs> placements and that's really Capricorn thing. They want to feel supported. And I've never had that in a relationship before, honestly. Um, yeah. So it's amazing. Yeah. That is so, I'm so happy to hear that. It feels as if, you know, you spent those, those first 25 years of your life overcoming depression and, and believing that it wasn't possible, finding out that it was possible, walking through this journey to find, um, you know, a supportive husband in your life after you overcame this depression, you had this desire placed on your heart, this dream to help others to, you know, be be able to overcome their depression and to find a place in life where you are at this moment. Also, there was still a lot of fears to walk through yourself. So you yeah. found this supportive husband, you found this dream, and you found this block that stopped you from truly taking action on this dream that has been placed on your heart. And I'm curious, would you consider, and I feel like I know the answer to this, so it feels safe to ask, but would you consider the Celestial Mindset Business Academy a pivotal moment in your confidence to launch your Overcome Depression podcast? Absolutely, 100%.
I, I would recommend this to anyone considering starting a business or who wants to work through blocks in their business. I can't recommend it high enough, truly. And, and I feel like throughout my life, it's funny because, you know, at 25, I found a solution that was able to get me off the Prozac I was taking. And I thought, oh my gosh, I've overcome depression. And then several years later, I hit another breakthrough and I was like, oh my gosh, I've overcome depression. And it just seems like my next best is better than I've ever felt before. So I didn't even know how, <laughs> like that I felt so great overcoming depression and it was so good. But I didn't yeah. know, I didn't even know that it could get better, if that makes sense, until it did. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that I thought that was as good as it gets. And it just, uh, and that just keeps happening. And so I'm excited that I'm only 40 and I still have at least 40, 50, 60 years to keep this pattern going. Like how much better can I get and feel and heal? And yes. that next plateau. So it's fun. Hi, my son. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm so, so grateful to be a part of your next plateau that you stepped into over these last 12 weeks. It's it's funny because I was saying that the other day myself, like life has been so good, but over these last two weeks, even, you know, even for me, I still find that I have stepped into a new level of peace in my life. Like I thought I understood it and I did, but like these last two weeks, I've stepped into another level myself. And it's so beautiful to know that I'm not doing that alone. I love to look at the process of climbing a mountain as what we're doing. And getting to that top of that mountain is so much more beautiful when we're looking out at the view of what we overcome when we have someone by our side. Mm -hmm. And so having you by my side, even though you're in the academy, you were a part of my climbing that mountain. And I am so grateful that I got to be a part of yours while we're looking at this beautiful view together. Absolutely. And I, I came to a realization just recently. Um, I'm always trying to understand the atonement, what that means, how it works. I think we just, most of us just don't, and can, it's so hard to comprehend for most of us. We talk about it all the time especially in church. But something that I realized was that when we're stuck in these, you know, well, my life is good. My life's good. It's fine. You know, and God's trying to give us something better. We, it's hard to, we cannot comprehend what that means because we have everything maybe that we want right now. And, and when I say that I, even the good, the bad, and the ugly, whatever that we have right now is are things we've committed to things that we quote unquote want, or we'd let go of them. Um, whatever that means, it could be because we feel safe in this behavior or or whatnot. But when we are willing to give up those things, which a willingness could come from doing a program like the mastermind, yeah, um, you're essentially giving God permission to make you into the person who will want all the things that you don't want right now, but mm -hmm. who will want them. <laughs> and that's hard to grasp because if you're, you're like, well, I don't like, cause part of me did not want to do the podcast. I was scared. I was like, I don't know that I want that life. I'm, I'm comfortable as I am, but now that I'm here and I've evolved and I've become the person who wants to do a podcast, it, it feels like I've been given everything that I ever wanted, even though I didn't know I wanted it, but because I've become this new person who God knew that I, he was going to turn me into and, and have, have me become this new person who wants very different things from the things that Jennifer of old wanted. And so to trust and have that kind of faith that when you get and when you evolve into that person you're going to become, you're going to want the things that you don't want right now. And, and again, it's hard to let go and trust that that's going to happen. Yeah. This academy is all about letting go of that which is not you. Those magnificent transformations that come in our lives come when we let go of the weeds that are that are cluttering our life. And so each week, what we did was we released a magnitude of belief systems that were cluttering your ability to want more, want better, believe that you deserve more and you deserve better and believe that you can have it and you will achieve it. 
And so I have so, so appreciated watching your journey because you were doing, you were doing really good, you know, when we met, it's not like your life was falling apart. Um, but to see the transformation between then and now has been so, so beautiful. And so I'm curious, what advice would you give somebody who is on the fence with working about working with me? If it's about the money, don't worry about the money. The money, there's there's more to spare. God has all the money he needs. He doesn't need your money. He'll provide the way. So don't worry about the money. If it's about the time, you will save a tremendous amount of time. I can get like, it's just, it's weird how that works, but it does. And so I just, if you can get over those things or I don't deserve it, you do. We all deserve to be better. So get over that one, please. Or at least shove it aside and sign up for Aubrey's class. And I will say, I wanted to say too, that um, after this mindset, we've collaborated on my workbook and I'm so excited oh, yeah. that you're yeah. going to tell us about that because I want it from your own words. of uh, About the workbook. So what we're doing together after working together, now we have, um, we have collaborated. And so I have done some SRT classes or a class for her workbook, all about overcoming depressions, where we tap into the most potent beliefs that keep us stuck in depression, and we release those. And SRT is the subconscious release technique, and it is that technique of letting go of these old beliefs that are not serving us, but are still there within our subconscious, and they are still driving us within a an un, unknowable way. We don't see it until we're consciously aware of it. And so it just brings awareness to those and then it allows us to shift out of them. And so within your workbook, which I've had a wonderful time looking over, it's very powerful, very beautiful. You have done so much to help those who are stuck in depression, um, really finding their pathway forward. You're giving them that leg up and you're doing all of this for, you know, the podcast itself is free. And then this workbook is such an affordable price. And what you created, if someone is willing to put the work in, they will find results. Much so like what I've created, I know when people put the work in, they will find results. There is no doubt in my mind. I expect miracles in my life. I expect mirror. I expect them and I demand them from God. I'm like, God, I demand a miracle. And I get them. I get them. Miracles happen. And, and, with I, and I honestly, that that's, that was the experience for me too. It came yeah. down to a, like, I'm, I'm telling you, you're going to do this, but it was yes. like, he wanted me to do it. He wanted me to open those floodgates. And he was like, thank you. Because I think a lot of people say, oh, that's so disrespectful to command God and to tell him what to do. And no, he wants you to ask. He wants you to say, fix it. Fix it. I'm done. And he's like, awesome. And he wants to, you to open those floodgates. So commanding God, demanding from God, as long as it's, but he, there's even been times when I'm the brat about it and he's still gave me what I was asking for. And I apologized later. So it's not okay yeah. to be a jerk to God, yeah. but you know, apologize if you are, but that command, it's powerful. Command God, tell him what yeah. you need. He wants us to ask him for what it is we feel that we need. And he's just waiting for it. And I find that a lot of my, like, I, I've been, I've yelled at God too. You know, I've, I've been mad because things didn't go my way and I yelled. And then there was a moment of this humility realizing that, you know what, God's not going to leave me because I'm yelling at him. Like he still loves me. There's still so much love there. And so when I'm demanding it from God, it's coming from a place of like my, I like I'm surrendering to myself. I'm demanding it from myself is really what it is. And I know that God can give it and I get to believe it thoroughly. And so, yes, I expect miracles in my program. I have seen them with many, many of the clients that are in this, uh, this academy is you, one of them. And I am so excited to just watch the miracles happen that I am expecting to happen with your workbook for, for those women that are walking through your workbook, overcoming depression. Literally, I expect them to overcome depression. So you know, 
want it to be a I common thing. I don't want it to be uncommon anymore. No, it is common. It is possible. Miracles happen. I see it every single day. Um, it just takes putting in the work. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that work is easy. It's simple. It's yeah. not easy. It's simple. It's it's easier than we think it should be. It's easy when you give when you lean in and you just let it happen. It's hard when you resist it. So it it's it's kind of that experience or that journey that you have to take where it gets hard until you decide you don't want it to be hard anymore. <laughs> it's really yeah. it's coming down to a decision. Yes. And so wow, that's so powerful. I'm looking forward to this launch and to seeing where this takes you. And, um, and so, yes, that being said, where can we find you and your services online? Where can we find your podcast? I know everyone's wondering, where's your podcast? <laughs> I have it hosted on Buzzsprout, but it's on all the major platforms. So if you type in the overcome, uh, the overcome depression podcast, it should, the first one was popping up for me, um, several ones. So that's exciting. Uh, right. And, uh, I've got a YouTube where you can see my face if you want to look at it. Uh, that's at, at I'm Aquarius, the letter I, the letter M Aquarius, I'm Aquarius. And then my website is I'm Aquarius.com or, or overcome depression podcast.com. I got both of those. They go to the same place and yeah, I've got socials that are all I'm Aquarius Jen. If you want to follow me on any of those, I'm Aquarius was taken <laughs> as well as the, the other. So you're not the only Aquarius out there. I know. <laughs> You should be unique, unique, you know? I wanted that name anyway, but yeah. And I, I do do one-on-one -on -one sessions right now. It's mostly people who want to dive into their charts because I find that that's the most easy for me to mm -hmm. kind of get past what they're saying and see what's actually the truth. <laughs> because a lot of people that it takes many, many, many sessions of therapy for you to kind of get to the bottom of what they're dealing with. Whereas I feel like if you look, at the chart, you can kind of see past the lies they're telling themselves mm -hmm. and get to the bottom of things faster. But I also feel that it's very validating for, for people to see that, hey, I see this in you, all these amazing qualities. And when I tell people that in general, who people who are struggling with depression, it's the tendency of someone who's struggling with depression to just wave it off like, oh yeah, well, I'm just paying you to say that. And when I can look at the chart and say, no, for real, God is saying, you were born with these qualities and this is why you might be struggling right now, but you're supposed to overcome it. That's part of the plan. And they usually they'll brighten up and go, oh, really? You yeah. see, wow, it says it right, you know, right there. Mm -hmm. And so I don't use astrology to predict or anything of that sort. It's, it's literally to give hope, to help people find God, to help mm -hmm. them feel loved by God, understood by God, and to help them in their relationships where they can have more compassion for themselves and their children who are very different than them. And you can, and I can tell them why they're having maybe some conflicts or why they're, they're struggling in certain areas and how to possibly alleviate some of that and move forward in those relationships as well as spouses, parents, learning about astrology healed or was instrumental. One of two things that were the most instrumental in healing my relationship with my mom, which was a very horrendously difficult, challenging toxic relationship for I want to say 38 years of my life and the last two have been beautiful so yeah. it can really change the way you look at other people the way that you look at yourself and provide that understanding and healing to help you move forward and that's why I love using astrology in my sessions if if you want to meet with me and you're not comfortable with astrology we can just talk we can talk about possibilities tools you can use and so forth. But I, I really enjoy using the astrology and human design. I think it's a lot of fun. And so that's, that's what I do. If you want to do a session with me. I love that. And I will be putting the links below. And so um, hopefully on whatever uh, platform I post this video on, there will be links connected to how they can find you, Jennifer, and your services as you help others to overcome depression. And so if you are still watching this, thank you for watching the whole video. I am so excited to share Jennifer's podcast. Also, if you are interested in learning more about the Celestial Mindset Business Academy, all about finding joy in your business, finding happiness in life and letting go of all that is cluttering you and keeping you stuck in your life. That is what the Celestial Mindset Business Academy is about. Go ahead and reach out to me and we will get you 
signed up and into the, I, I am biased, but it's the most amazing academy out there. <laughs> and so when does it start? When's the next one? Okay, so here is the most amazing thing. It is open enrollment. Anybody can sign up at any time. And I have my office hours that are just going to be open. And so when you sign up for the academy, it comes with, the, you know, 12 weeks of content that are already recorded. So you don't have to, you're not coming live to the academy portion itself. But I do a weekly mastermind, which is the weekly astrological forecast, uh, where we talk about what's happening that week, and we can plan according to our businesses for what's happening that week. And so I do that mastermind every single week. And then I also have office hours that you'll have access to during those 12 weeks of working with me. And so for a limited time, I am doubling up on those office hours and mastermind. So if you purchase those 12 weeks of the academy, you're going to get six months in my mastermind and in my uh, office hours. And wow. so you'll have six months access to me simply by purchasing the academy. Um, and it's weekly access. Like Jennifer said, sometimes those office hours, not a lot of people show up and I'm able to really dive into what it is you need at that moment to let go of the mindset shift that is unique to you, which is why I have those office hours. Um, it's so potent, so powerful, and so very beautiful. And so if you wanted to sign up for that, it is open enrollment and you can sign up as soon as you're able to. And again, that bonus extra three months on top of it is limited. And so I highly recommend you sign up right now before that goes away. And so, yes. Um, all right, Jennifer, it was so good to have you on. And I look forward to talking to anybody who is interested. Yeah. Thank you again, Aubrey.